here and not there. So I don't get too confused. But I just want to say welcome to Zoom and in Comfort. This is a program I started up a few weeks ago here from Sweden. And I am so glad to have you guys with us today because this week has been the most ex one of the most exciting weeks in the amount of weeks that we've had so far. <laughs> since we've had so much excitement in January, it's just been, uh, <laughs> it's just been, it's just been something after something after something. And then of course, then the 20th came in. Some of us have, have, have given ourselves a sigh of relief, but there's still so much work to do. Go. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go, oh, that's right. I should get a glass of a glass. Mm -hmm. I know, and I forgot mm -hmm. mine in the glass. kitchen. I, I need a glass. I need, I'm gonna order a glass. <laughs> Everyone's got a glass. Wait a minute. I just saw all these glasses. All right. Oh, I got right. I got a coffee cup. I, uh, I got a I've got a coffee cup. I, coffee I decided to be to be healthy this oh, point, and so I'm, I'm eating cup. healthy oh, and I'm not, not drinking anything. And I picked the wrong month to not drink. This is uh, <laughs> hey, you know what? Difficult. Could, yeah. You could have anything in there. We don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> You can have anything in there. It could be whatever you want. Oh, but I'm so glad you, you guys are here. Um, for everyone who's watching, you can write your comments or questions over in the comment section. Uh, just hit like, subscribe to the channel. It would be great for you to come back and see the other shows that I've done. And also, I'm glad, I'm glad you're here for this one today. And... I know I stated this one as U.S. inauguration, but there was so much happening this week, aside from the inauguration and a little bit of, 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 of impeaching and a little bit, <laughs> and a little bit, bit, a little bit of that, a <laughs> little bit of this, a little, little bit of, of, of arrests off, off planes <laughs> at luggage collection. I, oh, that was so just, beautiful. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just jumping ahead of myself. Before I begin, I want you all to introduce yourself. I'll, since I see myself in the middle, I will start with Andrew. You can begin by introducing yourself and where you're from. Uh, hi, I'm Andrew. Um, I'm from the U.S. originally, Arlington, Virginia, so D.C. area. Um, and I've been in Sweden now, Stockholm area, for almost 11 years. So a little, little while. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All you got for me? <laughs> uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't know what else to say. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. That's it for now. That's for now. Okay. And fill in the gaps later. Okay. Cool. <laughs> and Beth. I'm from Boston, which is why maybe I should have not have changed up my art sign. My <laughs> Boston skyline. Uh, I have been in Sweden since 1993. So a long time. Um, yeah, I still don't want to be, don't know what I want to be when I grow up, but I've been working with communication, uh, studying sort of some of the humanities, so social, and, uh, social, cultural anthropology, got uh, drafted into politics. That's my new foray, um, representing something. So I love when I have one of my American friends, I was like, your party. And he's trying to like, and plot, like the whole left thing or you and your democrat friends i'm like eh. I'm like the only party i actually belong to is the center party in stock in sweden you mean that one uh, but otherwise involved in a lot of the american stuff live just north of stockholm city mm -hmm. in a suburb d d johnson i've been here since 2003 um, moved here from New York, grew up uh, Detroit, Alabama, D.C., Maryland mm -hmm. area, and Chicago. Um, yeah, just been here a long time. It's not really much more. <laughs> Father of <laughs> <it> two. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's where I am in their room. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, you Father, have the kids who so can take their room. <laughs> Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who displaced kids. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I live in northern, northwest uh, uh, of Stockholm in a suburb called Jakobsbadi. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And Dr. Marquez. Yes, I did. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> I'm Evelyn and um, I am a psychologist and a life coach here in um, East Los Angeles, California. I am 
a California native, born and raised and probably here forever. Don't see uh, myself moving to Sweden anytime soon. So, and I remember when Jermaine moved to Sweden from New York, I remember that. So that's when we met, right? Around that time. Wow. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I think it was. That was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. So my children are grown, but I do have two grandchildren who live with me who I have to scoot around in terms of Zoom meetings and getting everything all settled. Kind of have, have to lock the door in my office because I get little surprise visitors if I don't. So, yeah. <laughs> So, and I for one am thrilled about this week in the inauguration and yeah. a little inauguration, a little impeachment, like Jermaine says, we, we shall see, we shall see, but I am holding out hope. Mm -hmm. I have been referred to as the Latina Pollyanna, so I am always a little bit half full, you know? Okay, that sounds good, mm -hmm. that sounds good. <laughs> and Angela? Hi, I'm Angela Harris. I live here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Um, I used to live in Sweden for about six or seven years and moved back about the end of 2012, 2013. And so I've known Jermaine a long time. I know Dee as well. I was thinking about when I met Dee, I met Dee, um, we did the volunteer at Thanksgiving at the at the, um, the homeless shelter. Is that right, yeah. Jermaine? That's my home. That's my home, yeah. That's, that's, yeah. that's my home, yes, that's my home. So, so I'm here um, in North Carolina absorbing the week I am um, representing my AKA Sara today oh, with good God. pink, <laughs> <laughs> and I wore. I found. I pulled out my pearls. I bought it. Sweden. <laughs> pink and green. Just don't make that noise. <laughs> okay, D. You, 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 I'm the kind of so. I'm the kind of AKA that you would actually like. So. Oh we're good. yeah. I, I mean, I'm cool with lots of AKs. Some of them are my best friends. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Except when they make that sound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Don't worry, I will thing. not make <laughs> that sound. Yeah. Oh. I used to be no allowed problem. to make the sound, but I don't make the sound because I ain't going. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. <laughs> but I am so glad you all are here. I would have. There's also a couple more that might be coming, should be coming. I don't know about their clock time, and they might have something else to do, but that's okay. We will start here. <clears throat> okay. My week started with talk of impeachment. <laughs> Well, actually, the whole week started, I mean, two weeks ago, I mean, most of that already had started. But um, I think the thing, we, we, we can actually start from, from if you'd like. You pluck any piece of this you want. I thought it was very amusing when I started to see these little videos um, with this very sad music on it. And then I didn't know what it was until, you know, I, they'd show the, an, air, an, an airplane. And I'm like, oh, why are they showing an airplane? And then they had these two policemen coming in to arrest people and I still didn't know exactly what it was for until I read the bottom and they were arresting a lot of the people that were at the insurrection I was like on the plane they let them get on the plane sit down put up their luggage and then escort them from their C-35 on the way back out and then catching them at at, at at the luggage, getting their luggage in their own state. This is my thing. The, the first word I thought was, wow, the entitlement. They thought that this was like going over to a friend's house, you know, like a, and just hanging out and maybe breaking up a couple of lamps in the apartment and it's gonna be okay. I could just go home. And I'm like- They were shocked. You they were shocked. <laughs> you 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 raided it, it was raided you raided and destroyed federal property and then you went home like oh i got work on monday let me get back <laughs> and thought it was going to be okay i don't know my mind could not wrap my heads around it please explain this to me who wants to start anyone can start <laughs> It's, I think you hit it right on the neck, on the head when you said it's entitlement because it's this idea, like I watched some of the raw footage of the guy that ended up filming the woman that was shot mm -hmm. and yeah. you, you just hear him going through it like, you know, you hear people saying this is our house. They, they really thought they were just, 
you know, warriors for the cause and they were justified and they were anointed. And, and he was telling like the cops, you know, like the whole like blue lives matter con concept. Mm. The, um, he kept like telling the cops that it's in their best interest that they should move aside because yeah. you know nobody wants to hurt you i'm only saying this for your benefit yeah. there's so many people out there you should just you know move aside so we don't we don't want to hurt you like like you know we're just doing this for your good <laughs> instead of you guys I mean, that entitlement that you're talking to a cop telling the cop like what you do? should move to not yeah. get hurt when in your lifetime have you ever spoken to a, an officer with a weapon that you're informing them that you're gonna you're trying to do them a favor? Like what? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I mean I think that's in in their world, you know, and they've they're surrounded by other people who are in that world too. They're so justified. There's not a bit of doubt in their minds that they're in the right, and so they have a hard time. I think uh, realizing that there's consequences. It's not like they're like stealing a candy bar and like, oh no, I'm doing something bad. I might get caught. They think they're doing, I mean, some of them literally think they're doing God's work. And they think yeah. that they, literally. whether or not it's true, they believe that Trump mm -hmm. was behind it, that the president who in their mind is the rightful president wanted them to do this. So they didn't have to be like, oh, I'm doing something wrong and I'm getting away with it. They're like, yeah, we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Evelyn? I was thinking, oh, they did. They've been emboldened for four years by this guy. So it's that's the scariest part. Watching them all come out of the woodwork. That was scarier than anything that, that Trump did, if you will. You know, for us here li living here and watching people just be just people do and say exactly what they've wanted to always do and say. But now that's okay. And it wasn't just a couple of things that Trump said. Um, leading up to the insurrection. For four years, he's been saying, I'll yeah. pay your legal fees. Don't be easy on them. We need, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's pretty clear. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it's, I mean, I'm, I'm going deeper and darker in this and I'm afraid, <clears throat> but I, I just see that this, they would have done this before Trump. It's just that they, this is now, it was just more justified. It's like they, this could have happened under anybody. I don't think it was just Trump. It's this, entitled attitude of when I'm on the side side of what the popular grouping of people like me think is right, I'm doing no wrong and I'll be forgiven for it. And I think you can look back in history for hundreds of years and see the same kind of entitlement attitude when like the mob gathers and the mob decides to do something. They're, they're always forgiven, the mob. It, I don't know if we want to get into a racial question at so, so soon in the conversation, but it's, it's I, I yeah I have it's been yeah I've been diving into a little bit of this I read um I read cased by uh Isabel Wilkinson and Wilkerson and it's it, it yeah, yeah. blew my mind and then I read her other book and I was just like okay I live 50 <laughs> something years of my life I've been on the side of I want right and do the right thing. And I've been clueless the entire time. Nice. I just, it's, everything makes sense to me in a completely different way now. And what I watched was a white feeling of I can do what I want, where I want, when I want, and you can't tell me other. And well, they're they were doing giving it. It was a point, it, I think it was more so, I understand what you're talking about, even from like even 70, 80 years back or even 30, 40 years back. The biggest thing with this, these last, I can't even say just four years, it was like five and a half years because it was even before he got elected when he was well, going yeah. through all the, having all the rallies, he was giving permission. Right. Th this was, this was, this, this boldness was already there. It was just, just waiting for permission, kind of. It, yeah, was it was almost publicly that announced. You know, yeah. it was, it was, and the fact that, you know, he's from like, the he has to, level, from yeah, the top level. exactly. It's, you know, yeah. it was given, they were given permission. It was giving permission. You know, yes. I mean, there are a lot of things just like, you know, when your mom, you know, if your parents tell you, um, you know, even if you don't like it, don't say it, <laughs> be polite. You know, this is that just in a, in a bigger sense. You know, yeah, you don't, well, I, but for me, I'm sorry, but for me, it's like, just like going to work. I'm not going to like everybody I work with, but I'm not going to disrespect them either, yeah. you know, but they were given 
the okay to do that. I'm sorry, Evelyn. You know, I was just going to say, not not even just the okay um, or the permission, but um, again, inciting them to do it. Mm -hmm. It's you know, because I mean, I mean, I agree with Beth that racism has always been there. That has not been. That's not. I mean, that's. It's, but it's again, not necessarily just under the surface. That people weren't didn't feel um, emboldened to act on it. Just even you know, lo locally and just you know with your neighbors and everything. They they wouldn't do what they now they have they have the permission and the approval from the administration. Mm -hmm. They call it yeah. that the shit show for four years. But you know, yeah. But, yeah, but yeah. I think that what you're, what you're finding now um, and some of the articles that were coming out about some of the interviews with some of the people that were arrested, like the Hunan <laughs> shaman, now they're realizing that they were grifted. Um, yeah. And they're realizing that some of them are coming out and saying, well, you know, Trump told us to do this. They told he told us to go and, you know, take, you know, basically move forward. And now they're coming back and saying, oh, wait a minute, why did we follow him? And this, this is coming out lately I now in the last day or so. Yeah. And, and I think you're right. I mean, this is not that this is, hasn't been here in our country. Of course, there's been a level of this um, deep, very, very deep. I think that what Trump is the ultimate grifter. And I think what he saw was that, hey, I have opportunity to be in power and uh, to get control and to make more money. This is about this is about uh, so much money. making <laughs> making making money. This is not just mm -hmm. hey, I want to be. Yeah, I, this is not a service-minded individual, and he he's a type of grifter that really understood how to get people to do his dirty work, which he's done all his life from his lawyers. Michael Cohen was one of them. He gets to do his dirty work, um, and he said, "Well, I can incite this group of people to do to do this." tactical dirty work for me and then I can still kind of keep my hands pseudo clean because I'm not doing it so to me now I think what's going to happen as you were talking earlier about people getting arrested at the airport and getting arrested in the restaurant and getting arrested when they're home I think that we're going to see a lot um, you have a lot of people that were felt very privileged and entitled and emboldened and they were you know texting hey I'm storming the capital and you know, I think I read one of, <laughs> Yeah, look at me. Um, I think one guy sent it to his girlfriend's brother, brother who's a federal agent. Mm -hmm. He said, <laughs> and he, who double had to, and this was, I just read this twice to make sure that I didn't realize. <laughs> I'm like, they're not realize. I think what I don't understand is that <laughs> you're raised to do, you know, you're, 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 you're taught, you know, the right and wrong and all this stuff. I mean, how can people be that? ignorant of the, of the basic law mm -hmm. about breaking and entering and breaking and entering into a federal in a federal um, 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 building and because they felt like oh you're right we're gonna be hey he's gonna hey he just pardoned so and so he's gonna he's gonna have a blanket pardon for me none of them got pardoned none of them got pardoned little Wayne did oh and that <laughs> other guy Kodak Black did. Kodak, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I didn't understand why, but okay. Kwame from Detroit did. Mm. You know, uh, you know. And Steve yeah, Bannon. And Steve, and Steve Bannon. Bannon. Mm. But I think there were 143. He had 143 people that he and I was like. Yeah. Well, but not well, one. But I found not one. I found from, from, excuse me, not one from the Capitol. Not one involved with that. So. Mm -mm. That's right. I was curious about the uh, finding out about the fact that he could do secret pardons. I didn't know that. I didn't know that that was a thing. So we mm. we, we can still find out that there might maybe some other pardons secret and the preemptive pardons. pardons. What the hell with preemptive pardons? That yeah, how, blows my mind. How, how is that even a thing? How, how can yeah. you? If you I didn't know. Do something, right? How do you know what it is you're being pardoned for exactly. if you didn't actually do it? Uh, that, it even make it's like a jail out of free card. Get jail, yeah. get out of jail free card that you're yeah. going to But it's a get out of jail and admit you did what you did. <clears throat> yeah. Pardons yeah. do not exonerate you from guilt. The, the, that's they, what okay. they exonerate yeah. you from the, the consequences of the, the consequences guilt. of the guilt. <laughs> but no. I was just. Yeah. Oh, um, can you can you speak to how Bannon? Because Bannon's trial hadn't started. So does no. that? I mean, so they never were able to like bring forth any. They could take the trial, but he's already pardoned, so there's no consequences that could happen. 
No. Yeah, but can they actually yeah. bring it to trial and then enter all that evidence? And... There's no point of a trial if there's no consequences. So there's no, no point of a trial. But he, but but what he it doesn't recognizes... exonerate him of is, is whether or not he was guilty or not. So he's guilty with, a, with no consequences. He's, he is unable, he... they're unable to give him consequences. So there's no point in, it's kind of mm -hmm. like if a person uh, is tried for a murder they cannot be retried for the murder. Now we can catch them on video after, and they're like, "Hey, here's my ID." <laughs> it was my me. Gun. But what I'm asking, like, and yeah. I don't think are any of us lawyers here because I'm not. No, no, no. I, no because I my question is, is I understand what you're saying that you know, like, if you've already been convicted, mm -hmm. so your your guilty reality. Is, is on record, but you are not going to have any consequences. So you get to go home and you're done and, and no other problems. But in Bannon's case, he hadn't been convicted. Mm -hmm. So does he take the guilty? No. With a pardon or he just, be, no. so he's never been guilty of anything. He's, there's no point pursuing that. I, I understand, but it. I mean that so on record, he never did it. Because he was yeah. never convicted. Yeah, he was, he was, uh, um, they put the charges on him. The charges are now useless because you can't follow through. Right. But I mean, because right. what all. I was hoping you was, you know, like you had said, you, you take the guilty and the pardon, but now there's no guilty. Like he can no. just as well say, I was never, I was never yeah. convicted of anything. Uh, I didn't do anything because wrong. Of, yeah. He, he, he can say do he it didn't do anything he, wrong. He never was like, uh, what's his name? The Illinois governor? Oh, yeah. Martin. He's but pardoned. he is guilty with the pardon. Yes. So yeah. right. If you're convicted, is, you're convicted. It's kind of like a king deciding mm -hmm. you don't need to take his head off. But, but, That's but with, it. With, with this preemptive pardon thing, does, how does it work legally? Is it tied to a specific charge? Because yeah, I, was I, I just be too. like, I got preemptively pardoned. And then, you know, they see Bannon gets preemptively pardoned. And then he mows down a whole shopping mall with a machine gun. He say, oh, I just got pardoned. That's I'm not pretty, a federal or offense. Is, or is, it, is it tied to something in particular? The pardon. I think it's up until calls. now, uh, until the day he left office or the day that he did the pardon. Oh, yeah. so anything after that, he could still go to jail. Yeah, okay. Blah blah blah. Well, what are the chances any of these people are not going to break the law again? I mean, come on, if they're going to be back in business, because I mean, there's a lot I mean, of the the was Steve Bannon, He 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 went and gripped it. Trump supporters about paying for the wall that Mexico <laughs> was supposed to pay yeah. for. That's so right. if he wants to keep grifting them, then live your best life, bro. <laughs> because, Go with you know, God. <laughs> that, you know, people aren't really remembering the fact that they have raised 200 plus million dollars yeah. that that fund is worth learning from experience that that fund is not like protected in any way. They can spend mm -hmm. it on whatever Anything they, they want. want. Yes. And the idiots that paid into it, I kind of want to go, suckers. Because <laughs> it's but not paying for their bail. <laughs> yeah, but on the other hand, you know, Trump right. and company have $200 million. You know, so while I'm hoping the guy's in debt a lot more than that, he's going to get $200 million to his whatever he needs it for. Like, he's not no. crying poverty by any means. Well, I think no. he owes Deutsche Bank with 300, he, I think Deutsche Bank has a $340 million loan that they're, yeah. they might be calling in. I think if that, I could be wrong, but I think that's what I'm hearing. And um, I think if, what, I think what we're going to see is that we're going to see the Trump brand um, and the Grift family, because I, I think they're all going, they've all moved to Florida. They're going to go in try to run for political office in different states. Cause I think on one daughter, um, um, daughter-in-law who's from North Carolina wants to run for a, a seat here in North Carolina. And um, that's the talk. So I think it's gonna be, I think what we're gonna be dependent upon and who, are, and who we're gonna be um, applauding in the next year or two are the state attorney generals who bring state right. cases against um, some either Trump or Trump associates or Trump family members for issues. I think that's where he has no protection um, whatsoever or, or his, any of his family members. And I think that as much as he probably wanted to give himself a preemptive whatever pardon or his family a preemptive pardon, that would have probably put much more of a bullseye on their backs than them not. So they're out there, you know, praying and hoping and 
paying off or whatever they do um, to hope that, you know, it doesn't come to that point. But, you know, this week, you know, has been so monumental um, in regards to, you know, yes, we are talking about impeachment and that's a whole other animal of how that's going to happen. Do I, and I don't know if they're going to actually impeach him. I don't think the Republicans have this coming for it. Yeah, but let's talk about, but the, from a historic perspective on the positive side, um, I got extremely emotional when I saw Vice President Harris take the oath of office. Um, and um, because I thought, you're right, she is, this is extremely monumental in that regard. Um, I got very emotional hearing Amanda Gordon and her inaugural poem, um, which I thought was phenomenal. And now I'm going to go out and buy her books. Um, oh, they're, they're all like, She's like number one and number two on Amazon already. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, by, her, by her books, I thought her poem was like on point. And if you haven't had the opportunity to listen to her interview with Anderson Cooper about how she came about and created that poem, it's phenomenal, her process. Um, and I thought what was interesting for me um, was the fact of, you know, I was as I was listening and watching the inaugural concert, I thought, you know, in the past, they've had all these private balls and this ball and that ball, and you don't really get to see any of that. I'm like, they should do away with the old way of doing <laughs> balls and everything. And this is how they should do inaugural concerts um, from moving forward, because I felt a part of it. I felt so much more a part of it than yeah. like, oh, I went to the Massachusetts ball or the North Carolina ball, or the Delaware ball. It was like, everybody's together. Yeah. You know, and, it, and they incorporated Americans, everyday average Americans, people that are actually doing things in the community for introductions. And it was, I mean, like, yeah. you know, when Demi Lovato was singing Lovely Day, I'm like, Bill oh, Withers. Wow. And I was That's like, amazing. you know, they're dancing with it. And, and then when um, John Legend did Nina Simone, New, New Day, New Dawn, New Dawn, New Day, I'm like, by far yeah. the most perfect. <laughs> and it, and then Katy Perry ended it, you know, it's great. But I think yeah. that there's so much- That I mean, fireworks show. How about that fireworks show? Oh my God, are the there best any I've fireworks ever That was yeah. beautiful. It was best it was of phenomenal. ever seen. There were so many things as we were, as I was looking on the dais of who, you know, like, you know, of course, you know, the memes about, you know, Bernie Sanders, you can't pass that up, but of, you know- the They're still coming, they're still yeah, coming. Yeah, the, the civility, the professionalism, I was actually, for the first world, well, the first time, I was, I was um, proud of um, our our former vice president Mike Pence, who showed professionalism, civility, Truly. you know, Truly. class. So the one thing I say too is that we had a lot of class from you know our incoming administration, but I think that what to me Trump and his family showed was the no matter how much money you have in the world or how. Um, or, 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 or the amount of things you have, if you, it, it, it doesn't mean you have class. And it really exemplified that he has no, they had no class. Mm -hmm. Or as, or as a, my family would say, he had no home training. No so he showed training. no home training this way. Yeah. Yay, Deborah. <laughs> can can you talk? It. I made yes, it. it. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, please Hi, quickly Hi, <laughs> introduce yourself real quick. I'm Deborah Dawkins. I've known Jermaine since the, almost the day she was born, just oh. about. <laughs> and I live in Brooklyn. I'm a floral designer. And I just love artwork, doing anything artsy. <laughs> Didn't have to tell him you knew me that long. God. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, don't, I don't mind selling folks that I'm 71. It's OK. We're still here. Oh. You do not look it. <laughs> you look great. You sure don't. Thank you. <laughs> oh, Thank I'm you glad. Know. I'm glad you. I'm glad you're able to make. It. Yes, through even. Yes, yeah, since I was a child, a baby. <laughs> 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 but I'm glad I have huge. This the representation that I have. Even from now, this is a question I want to ask. New York, Ca uh, California, and the Carolinas. Did anything happen there? Because they were always talking about there's going to be some, you know, ruckus there in any of the federal buildings. Every state did, capital. Did, yeah. Did anything happen? Had you heard anything from any place there in New in, in New York or in Cali or? Well, in New York, we have what's called the downtown area. Everyone has a downtown area, and Black Lives Matters 
got together, marched across the Brooklyn mm. Bridge, and uh, the police threw them on the ground. I mean, they just mishandled Turned down in force. It became yeah. a, a mad scene. It became yeah. very negative. So, mm -hmm. on the day of the inauguration? Uh, no. The day. It, no, it was the day after. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to remember. Okay. <laughs> Day before or day after, I can't remember. Right in that window. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Yeah, because the comparison was made with how many uh, how the law enforcement personnel and how many, how the numbers, how they showed up and just yeah, how they treated it is just exactly again, that contradiction. Okay. Yes, and our Attorney General Letitia James is bringing a lawsuit, a class action lawsuit against the police per the handling of the Black Lives Matter during the summer. Mm -hmm. That I heard, she said, yeah, <laughs> against the whole police department, against the yeah. mayor, against all of it. Mm -hmm. I was, I, it was like a 30, 40 minute speech and I was like, okay, you know, I mean, so hopefully that will, that will come to fruition. How, yeah. how exciting it was it, how exciting was it to see the, uh, the security guard, or the, I'm not sure if it was Capitol Police or if it was security guard who led them away. And Eugene then Goodman. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Bravo. Saw him. Well, that was, saw that him. was brave. That's all yeah, I can think. Know, that Richard, was brave Richard, because yeah. no, he Before couldn't. Was, was yeah, like, he couldn't like, know. Oh my God. Yeah. That's so amazing. And I thought of his family, how his family's trajectory has yeah. changed forever. Just, yeah. you know, that's yeah. so, so wonderful. <laughs> My only issue with that with that story is they always omit the reason why they changed him. Because hmm? he's a black police yes, officer. Yes, exactly. And and but they talk about the story like he just magically got them to go after him. No, you oh, have white no. supremacists chasing a black police That's officer. Exactly right. Who mm -hmm. and that they're for blue lives matter. That's a good point. But he kept them away. And every time you hear the story, they just leave that little thing out. If I use mm -hmm. this skin to get you to chase me to save people's lives, mm -hmm. wow. talk about my skin. Great point. Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. And I, the, really the one thing huge. that I thought about when I watched all the details is all the senators and Congress people, when they were like, you're going to have your detail today, I'm sure their first question was, uh, are they black? Because <laughs> we're the only safe people. <laughs> See that? You want black people around you. And you notice yeah. there was a lot of black people around <laughs> doing the wow. details. Yeah. Oh, details. yeah. Because, you know, 9 11 and any of these pre existing um, uh, historical events, <clears throat> black people you start to trust in that moment. Because you don't yeah. know, you know, uh, after Oklahoma City bombing, you never know if these white people are out there to do you harm. So magically, yeah. everybody wants to hug us. <laughs> after they're traumatized and this yeah. guy got to walk down there and they talked about it on the news i was watching the stream and it just irritated me that they didn't say why they chased him mm -hmm. and you know point. this is the thing that america needs to get to and and going back to earlier when beth was talking about uh this as well the the thing that i think about when i watch these these privileged white people come in is when you have a messed up version of history Mm -hmm. And you, you see history from the, we're 1776 going mm -hmm. up against the British. Well, technology was different in 1776. You with a musket and then with a musket was an even fight. Mm -hmm. You using the fact that you were born and raised here, fighting them with a the musket is a different thing. The U.S. military is a totally different thing. There's no one in their right mind that thinks mm -hmm. that they're going to take down the largest force in the history of mankind that has stuff sitting around in this closet that we've never heard of before. Uh, someone's <laughs> asking me, like, what would have happened if they actually got to Nancy Pelosi and AOC? Mm. And I was Woo! like, it's uh, very simple. How do they leave the Capitol? And I grew up in D.C. <laughs> they would have been mowed down. Mm -hmm. It would have been some weird stuff that we're, we're watching and we're like, why are only the rioters falling down? <laughs> and be like, oh, we, we can't talk about what, what we did right there. <laughs> so it's, uh, you know, that these, these idiots thought that they could do something, but there's no plan behind it. Mm -hmm. And if you base it off of history, 
you're basing it off of 1776. You're not basing mm -hmm. it off of 2021. Mm -hmm. And in that concept, there was no way they were ever going to do it. And I think the thing that they made the biggest mistake and the reason why they're purposely pulling them off, let them walk away and are snatching them up every single day is to show them that they get against the one branch of government that is the one you don't want to go against. You can hate the president. You can hate the Supreme Court. But the people with the purse, string, purse strings of the United States government, the ones who look the FBI dead in their eyes and tell them what they're about to do, even if they don't want to do it, is Congress. And you ran up in their house. You ran up in their workplace. They had to be rushed off the floor. The vice president of the United States, who was a terrible person, in my opinion, actually, his life was in danger in that point in time. Mm -hmm. This is something Republicans and Democrats are not going to forget. And I think the reason why they're pushing back the, the impeachment to the 8th of um, February is because somebody inside of the white inside of Congress helped these people. Yeah. Uh, oh, yes. Ayanna yes. Oh, I, said that when she went to her office, her people right. looked for the panic button that only Congress people know where it is. And it was ripped out. Mm -hmm. How could it be ripped out if they hadn't even made it inside her office? So That's I right. think what what's about to happen is- It wasn't just the button. People, the, yeah, whole the whole system thing is gone. was yeah. ripped out yeah, of that whole, office. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It was dismantled and removed. Yep. And so I think what they're doing is they're like, cool, y'all want to push it back and give him time. We're getting more and more information right now. So we're going to go from just trying him to holding other people for treason. And, and, also and their at hands the end of the day, I mean, look at Haiti. We don't forget. The West mm -hmm. does not forget. Haiti is poor because it was the first Black insurrection, a uh, slave revolt in the Western Hemisphere. It is broke today because of that. Look at Cuba. We went in on them and they pushed us back on their own soil. And we right. were like, you know what? I'm going to give you the next hundred years where we starve you to death. This is going to be one of those situations where you get to see just how petty the U.S. government can become. Yes. And, you know, as a black man, I'm just watching. <laughs> <laughs> get your popcorn. <laughs> yep. Yep. But I, I just to finish with that, you know, the, the type of stuff that they used against us, we have to be very careful about being pro making more laws against internal oh, terrorists yes. because they will turn on us the second yeah. that they did. The version of the police force that we know yeah. of today mm -hmm. was based off of the mafia and Irish gangs. Mm -hmm. And do you know That's what they right. did within 10 years? They hired mafia and Irish mm -hmm. gang people who turned mm -hmm. it into black people within 10 years and then everybody forgot that nobody in the 30s or you know, 20s and 30s during bootlegging was worried about black people. They were worried about Irish and mafia, uh, Italian mafia people. And they turned it within 10 years that their real purpose was to get us because they put those same thugs into police or, uh, uniforms and did that. So when you look at 9-11, <clears throat> same thing has been used against black and brown people. Um, they've been going to mosques. Of, I mean, there's a billion Muslims on earth. If they wanted to mess us up, we'd all be dead. <laughs> but they're going to mosque and, and, and breaking their, their privacy, their First Amendment right, their, their right to gather for religion. Right, right. Nothing happens. We already have enough laws. We need to pare down those laws, go after these same people that were yeah. emboldened by the fact that their parents were the ones screaming at Ruby, um, what's her name, the six-year-old going into school. Their mm -hmm. parents were the one firebombing houses and, and wearing this. And their grandparents were the one who could do any and everything else. Even, even some of our stories throughout history are based off of lies. Laura mm -hmm. Ingalls is who helped recreate this concept that forging into the, the Wild West was an awesome thing to do. Her dad murdered Native Americans on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. And there's historical proof that he probably was a cannibal on top of that during the, the long, cold winter that she m despairingly oh. talks about. So, so when we talk about America, and people kept saying this over and over and over, this is not who we are. This is exactly, this who, is we exactly are. who we are. And this is yeah. where we actually have to stand up and say, well, exactly. we actually are like this. We don't want to be like this. So why don't we work on trying to be something different than what we are? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
And I think I mean, the numbers, the numbers are still there in terms of the number of people who voted for him, the number of people who participated. They're yes. still there. It's very, it's, it's very interesting to see what's, what's going to happen moving forward and how to, how to sort of, you know, there, I mean, we heard a lot of talk recently about um, what do we, it's almost like um, having them, um, that they've been brainwashed. I, I'm just not, I don't think they would mind that. I'm not seeing you know, anyone line up to be treated for it. They're brainwashed. Up. Do you know what, what I mean? they're going to do I mean, is like rebrand. Yeah. yeah. What they're uh, going to yeah. do is rebrand them. Rebrand them. When, uh, who was the person that was talking about it earlier mm -hmm. about the person who ran it? I don't know what happened. I think, I don't know why I went into the Capitol, blah, blah, oh, blah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. something that we, as people of color, never get. Mm -hmm. If Absolutely. we go and do a crime, there is no one asking us, uh, were your parents hugging you when you were a kid? Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Are you hungry? Going this, Burger that, King? That, and the other. Yeah, yeah, you want some Burger King? They're rebranding. <laughs> because the one thing American media always does is there has to be a reason why some stupid 20-something-year-old walked into church, sat through prayer meeting with people, and then opened fire on grandparents and parents, oh, and student with kids in there. And there must be a reason why he's off. Because that's why the well, lived to of the walk crash out is created, huh? I mean, and he lived to walk away. Yeah. I mean, what are the chances of person? Yeah, like so dead. Y'all be like, remember D? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And we here so get to the bottom line for all of this haranguing and all this rage that the uh, those Republicans have. Is the bottom line the fear of the Browning of America? Yep. You know, what do y'all yeah. say? Yes. Oh, it's fast. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. oh, yeah. It yeah. has to do with, you know, you're on top. The whiter you get, the more on top that I'm going to name this book over and over again because it's changed me. But um, Isabel Wilkerson's book on case, the yes. idea, I mean, she's not the first one to suggest that there's a case system in the United States, but she, oh, yeah. she, she plots it so factually and demonstrate He's saying cast it, okay so. cast right? is the name cast. of the book is cast sorry it's yeah. an awesome yeah. book yeah yeah it's and and her other book as well i forget the name of it but she also looks at the uh, the great migration which history mm -hmm. i didn't learn in school and her, her those two books have just mm -hmm. uncovered a reality of how little we know or little we understand, I should say, about our about the United States and how it's formed. So, so the book cast, just to, like I said, she's not the first one to suggest there's a caste system, but mm -hmm. to methodically plan it out, to point out to why and how the significance of how we all fall into it and how Southern Europeans weren't white. Like the concept of what is white and what is not white is, is entirely created and new. Yeah. And, and it started in the United States and the Nazis looked at yeah. how the U S had apartheid for having its thing. And then, you know, we look at the Nazis. It's just, you know, it's this whole circle, but the idea of, of the superiority element of if you are white, you're always yeah. going to be on top and everybody in the middle is always just trying to get one more rank right. up on that, on that ladder so, and if you eliminate the laddering, then you have nowhere to try to aim for because then suddenly you're lost in the wind of who's better than me or who's worse than me. Right. I don't know, it's not so clear anymore. Yeah. And, and when and I mean, white isn't as white, it's, you know, it's like, all right, so who's the superior race if there's no white people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and and it, dare I say that when I went to Cuba that I, I kind of saw that. Cuba, Brazil, the lightest skinned women did the commercials were in the the upper offices of money making management and you know those are darker tones were you know in the background mm -hmm. on the bottom mm -hmm. i don't want to say and, bottom but and that applies were. not only in europe i mean I'm, my mother's from the philippines but also the if you yeah. are a mixed filipino like they call them mestizos because Four or five hundred years ago was also when the Spaniards came in. They were superior to the, the local population. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the lighter you are, the more you are related in some way to European. The more European you can look, and 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 they have the name mestizo. And now even additionally to that, if you have one Filipino parent and one non-Filipino parent, like you are, you are God in, in yeah. the Philippines. Yeah. Andrew, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say it's it's important to to realize that. 
uh, my computer's making noise. That uh, I mean, that this isn't this isn't conscious. Like people people don't realize it needs to be brought out in the open because these people don't realize it. And like their their identity is threatened, and they don't even they don't even know why. They so don't know why. I mean, they're they're looking for reasons why, and that's why they latch on to all this crazy shit. It's because they're looking for a reason why they know they feel threatened and they're looking for a reason why. Right. Um, but the, and it's yeah. I mean. No. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I mean. I mean that that was the main point. Is is they they don't realize. And so when you when you try to when you try to tell people about it, they're reacting really strongly because they don't want to they don't want to accept that part. They don't want to say like you know what part of my identity is I feel better than other people because of my race, yeah. and that is a part of their identity. But they don't they're not conscious of it and they certainly don't want to admit that and so there's a lot of resistance to that and then that leads to this like lashing out mm. yeah, they're, I think they're the threat of their privilege yeah <laughs> or, or their, their perceived privilege right. yeah. because the majority perceived. of like people perceived. the more majority of people Same. don't have yeah. the privilege that they think these idiots no. perceive a rich kid who never worked a regular job in his entire life whose daddy bailed him out so many times that we will be depressed if our, even if we were to just scale it down and your mm -hmm. parents were paying 50,000 here and 50,000 there and you owe 250,000 to them, we would feel like losers if we did that. But what he did was he felt like he should be able to get what he wants. So what he did is he rebuilt his image, a rich kid that went to private school and military academy mm -hmm. into mm -hmm. a fake mafia boss, mm -hmm. it's not real. He's never been real. And so he makes himself into this fake mafia boss. Why would a, a rich kid who went to private school and military academy even talk the way that he talks? You know, like he should have a bigger vocabulary. He's had all the resources. <laughs> right. He's had all these things. And so you get these people that are sitting there voting for this guy saying he's just like us. He's mm. not like you. He doesn't give a damn about you. That's and right. He cares about... And he's been saying this, follow what he's been doing the entire time he's been in public life. Mm -hmm. he, his whole thing is to be like the Wall Street people. The reason why right. he hates Jeff Bezos, because Jeff right. Bezos is an actual billionaire. But to get back to those people, the reason why they feel like they're, they're getting cheated and all this kind of stuff is we have a, a period uh, of where our parents' generation, my dad was born in 1938. Um, and our parents' generation who marched with Dr. King and all this kind of stuff made a deal with the devil. And that deal with the devil, um, it didn't really come in a really quick version. But by the time I came around in 1975, that deal with the devil, I got to be a part of it. I'm from a middle, upper to middle class, um, upper middle class uh, family own their own home, so on and so forth, college educated, this, that, that, and the other. And the thing that we were told was not to make waves. We weren't, mm. we would go to school with white kids, which was different than our parents' generation, but we didn't tell them that the police officers followed us at the mall when we were with them the next day. And so what we did is our parents told us to just be quiet and, and it allowed a new generation of ignorance. And this generation of ignorance got fed by the media and from pop culture in the same way. When you think of the 80s and 90s, what do you think about? Average, below average, sorry, white, overweight dudes meeting a model chick, deciding that he deserves to be with her. Not only does he get her because she is just an ornament to him, but he also gets the big job and lots of money and drives away in a Lamborghini at the end of the thing. What white dudes were taught the entirety of my childhood was that you deserve the absolute best, even if you're way under average, even if you're a terrible student, even if you don't get up in the middle of the night to make sure that you did the correct things before the next day, even if you don't get to work on time. All those norms were thrown out of the window so you can see some fat white dude with a, a skinny model chick drive away in his Lamborghini. What exactly do you think was gonna happen? What I saw in the Capitol was people who, who watched those movies and Rambo movies. <laughs> and none of them were real. Because when they got sprayed in with mace, look at this summer. We <laughs> saw 20, 21 year olds, 18 year olds, 16 year olds. Look at the camera and be like, ah, they sprayed me with mace, but we're gonna keep fighting because black lives do matter. 
And then they are up on the camera like, <laughs> this way, Mace, all I was trying to do was go into the U.S. Capitol. It's a revolution. <laughs> Isn't that hysterical? That is hysterical. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that was Elizabeth from Knoxville who said that on, on CNN. Shout out to Elizabeth. I yeah, hope so. she enjoys her show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I'm in jail. I was just serving the Capitol and somebody died. It was a cop. I love that cop. <laughs> but you know it, the capital thing. But you know, I think after, after that, and then they had uh, the military inside, and I remember there was there was a video that I was watching. It was like a minute and a half, and they were just they had filmed like all these soldiers like sleeping all over the place, even in the parking lot and everywhere. And the, there was a comment, I think it was on Twitter or somewhere, saying. I don't understand why these soldiers are laying all over the floor of the Capitol and sleeping. Why couldn't you have given them better accommodations? And then the other person read, why? You're asking the wrong question. The question is, why do we need these soldiers like this in triple numbers in the Capitol in the first place? Yeah. You know, because they have to be there to fix their minds to realize that they might have to shoot you, another yeah. American. Something that they're not, if correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, exactly trained for. No, no not really. Well, Thank you. Yeah. No, no, I, I, <laughs> you know, it's not like you're going to go in there and you're going to shoot Americans. Okay. That's not the fixation that you have when you're going into, when you're a military <laughs> officer. Related to that, I, yeah. I, was in the, I was in the Army Reserve for eight years. I was in Iraq and stuff like that. Um, it didn't surprise me in the least that the National Guard was laying on the, on the ground in the, mm -hmm. in the garage. Mm -hmm. they, they don't pay a whole lot of attention to your comfort. No. Um, if you're, if but they, you're a soldier. But did you see and, they, that, and they're embarrassed when somebody who's a civilian sees it or whatever. But that's just kind of what you, you do. Like, mm -hmm. And actually, if anybody was complaining about it, you'd be like, come on, dude, suck it up. Yeah. Um, but that <laughs> doesn't did, surprise me at all. They, they were did in a, complain. Yeah, they did. They did, they did complain. It was, it was a, and the difference, again, with this administration is that when the, the National Guard did, they did, they felt comfortable they wouldn't have under a trump administration but i i believe but they did say you know this is bullshit look how you're treating us We're, yeah you know, that's good, down that's here. good. Yeah. and I, I, um and people came out and said and you know again came out and said apologize they issued an apology again these are people you know we we brought you in here to protect us and then you know we kind of treated you like crap there at the end i mean but listen they they sleep they needed that Mis mr pillow guy to come in and issue you know Evelyn, Evelyn, are you talking about the the most recent events where there was there was a bit of a, a stir regarding where the the troops had been sent because that was yeah the capital police sent them they, to they, the yeah they were kicked out of the capital mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. their complaint wasn't so much like not now we're not comfortable but like all right we don't have a problem lying on the floor but now you want us to protect you but you want us to be in this corner of a basement? Well, I, well, I think well they were, it wasn't a basement, it was I a parking lot. Right. And they were they were complaining about, I mean, it wasn't like they're used to the Four Seasons or anything. They were just saying, wow, just the way that, no, you know, I, that, I mean, again, they'll sleep, they were sleeping on the floor in the Capitol. They're used to that kind of thing if they, you know. No, they, I think, what, I think that the story basically is this, um, from what I'm reading, basically that's where they would go for a break. And they right. were, and basically it wasn't that they were sleeping there. They were, not, you know, they were in, they're basically in the Capitol room. Basically that was a location that some person made, which they said they're going to find out for when they take a break. Mm -hmm. So, and they said, and that was the issue. It wasn't they were, they were kicked out the Capitol. That, that is it. But and that is the story. They rotate, that was the, rotate, you know, that was the response. That was the right. cleaned up response. Is what yeah. That's a clean up. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. That's what the yeah. response. But I think that but the, the point is, I think it's just that there can at least at this point be dialogue about it and be listened to and right. apologized to. Yeah. You know? I think that what will happen is, is that they will get down to what well, it'll be a transparent um, process of saying, this is who made the yes. call. This is yes. why they made the call. This is why the call was it was not correct. This is how we mitigated the issue. And that's um, the point that never happened with the Trump administration. That there is a problem because there was never a problem with anything they did. There was just right. that I yeah. mean, how about having a, um, a press briefing now that is civil and normal? That's amazing. 
you know, where reporters aren't being treated like crap. And, and more importantly, that is, as far as we know, truthful. Mm -hmm. So, which yeah. I think is um, even more, I, I think that, you know, when I lived in the U, when I lived in Sweden, the one thing I realized is that, you know, our media, our information is filtered, even in, even under Obama, under any oh, oh, administration. Yeah. It's just oh, filter. Yeah. I mean, I learned more on CNN International and, and, and from Swedish news and, oh, I didn't know that happened there. And, you know, all these things that, you know, we don't cover here. So that's definitely true. Um, I think that well, for, Swedish for me, news is also filtered. Yeah, filtered. Yeah, I, yeah. Yeah. I, kind of yeah, I, 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 I yeah. totally understand that. Um, but I think that what, what this last couple of days have shown is that whatever sense of normalcy we had in regards to how from a civil, um, from a, the civility and uh, rules of whatever order they want to follow, um, at least we're coming back to that so that we can have at least some type of discourse that is educated. I felt that we had four years of very uneducated administration. Um, Dr. Fauci basically, when he did his, his interview this past week, said how liberating it was mm -hmm. to be able to have a, um, to talk about this and to talk about, you know, um, it freely about what's going on with COVID. So um, I think this has been a, a four year track of the, the well, what was Lauren Hill's um, album, The Miseducation of Lauren Hill? This was the miseducation <laughs> of the American people um, or the lack of education of the American people for the last four years. Yeah. I think it educated us very well. Well, First and foremost, uh, the concept of president we had up until this point was that there were rules and regulations. But when this fool showed up at the office with no shoes on, <laughs> walking around, doing all yeah, kinds yeah, of Yeah, we, we've been stuff, taken for granted. We like, wait, oh, uh, there's nothing in the rule book for this? Uh, and I think uh, what it ended up doing, and I would actually say the benefit of the Trump presidency, as opposed to Hillary Clinton presidency, presidency, and I, I will put a little asterisk on this. She would have been the best possible human being to be in charge during a pandemic, flat out, because mm. she knows how to use the actual wheels of government, which is, as a, a person who knows bureaucracy, she, she would be amazing mm -hmm. at doing that. But the great thing about him, just like during the Obama administration uh, compared to her, is that just like during the Obama administration, people kind of left it on the burn and were like, yeah, he got this. We're not worried about this. And what, what we ended up doing is not making as much progress as we should have made. Once we got an idiot in the White, uh, White House, think about how many 15, 20 year olds, 25 year olds have a very good understanding as to what their rights are, what the constitution is, all these things. We just had the biggest mass pro uh, protest in human history uh and and people don't understand the scale of this these uh black lives matter uh things compared to the 1955 to say 1968 69 um those amount of people that marched and all the pictures you see are the same people over and over again because it was tops two three four hundred thousand people that marched and it was overwhelmingly black very few white people uh, who marched with them. There were some, some white people and Jewish people that marched with them, of course. I'm not saying that didn't happen. But percentage-wise, it wasn't this. This was like 40, 50% was white people marching the entire time. This was, this was genius in that it not only did that, it did not rely on a figurehead like a Martin, a, a Malcolm, or anybody else. It, it relied on different people reaching out to different people to, you know, maybe you got something from Ta-Nehisi Coates that you didn't get from this other person over here. Mm -hmm. But what it ended up doing is it changed the language of the way that, that we talk about these things. These were always said to us as we were crazy. Like, sure that's, yeah. you sure that's racist? Of course, I'm a black 45 year old man. I have a PhD in racism. And if I speak up, it's a hundred percent chance that it is racist what is happening. Now we're starting to see it. And for the first time, Obama didn't do this because he was afraid that he would make the American public think that he was a black president only, but he never said white supremacy in his inauguration address. This was the first time we've ever had this. And so it's important for us to actually see the benefits of what 
Trump and all this chaos did, mm. I couldn't have gone through four more years of this. I mean, <laughs> I always tell people the thing about Trump to me is I don't care about his policies. I don't care about anything. As a human being, he's the most irritating human being I've ever had. Liar. I've had ex-girlfriends and people I dated that just won't shut the hell up. And this man makes them look like they're they're nuns. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know that what bad, huh? that <laughs> bad. This is seventy-some year old dude. Like, come on, man. Like, he'll never just be like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take the day off. He four years straight. This dude stayed at a hundred the entire time. And mm-hmm. instead of mm-hmm. him taking one thing, and here's the thing, he could have left us in this conversation in a totally different space. Because if he had done one thing and he was like, well, looks like I lost the election. He didn't have to say it out loud. He's like, but what I'm gonna do is I'm going to focus on COVID over the next, until I switch from November mm-hmm. until mm-hmm. January. And I'm gonna change the way people see me. If he had just gone all out, We'd be, all, we'd be on here like, yeah, I couldn't stand him. He's a terrible person, but uh, God bless him for what he did with COVID. Uh, he did a terrible job in the beginning. The last three months have been amazing. Uh, God bless America. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. But I mean, I mean we're doing that with Pence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Pence is Andrew? trash. And he still Andrew. did a better job than him. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're, like everybody has like a warm, fuzzy feeling about Pence now. And all he did was like act no. minimally no, polite mm-hmm. for like a day. And we're yeah. all yeah. After, after people, after a mob tried to kill him. And, yeah. he, and he acts nice for like a couple of days. We're like, wow, he's still he saw Jesus for real this time. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I mean, but, but, like, we're, if, but, if, but it's Trump like we're grasping just, for something that had came came out of this administration that's more more than just vile. Yeah, but and, I mean, I agree. If, if Trump had just done something good, or even been seemed, if he seemed to be trying really, really hard, like focusing, you know what, I'm going to do what I can for COVID now. You know, we it started too late, but we're going to do what we can until we do. If he had done that, and then he had stepped out gracefully. He could have ended on a completely different. He could have ended on a completely different note. Been, yeah. Everybody here would still be mad at him now, but he would be yeah. mad totally differently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But that's, that that presupposes the fact that he felt like he should be seen differently, like some. No, exactly. Like, he, he doesn't have that level of awareness. And there was that. nothing. He, you know, he's he's fine. He's he's yeah. he's perfect. He's you know that there there was no no uh, uh, no in, increase in his level of insight, personal insight. <laughs> He was there. I mean, I just you know. want to know what's in that note that was found that Biden found that President Biden found the drawer. He said the note was very generous. What does that mean? Uh-huh. Yeah, I thought of that too. Guys, Donald that. Trump. <laughs> you know, but I mean, but Donald, Donald Trump, he was he was apparently like uh, like seemed to be genuinely touched when he saw the letter that Obama left for him because he didn't um, know about yeah. it and, and 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 tried to he didn't know that was the thing because he doesn't know anything that the previous president leaves uh, mm-hmm. a letter. He, no. Oh, yeah. wow, a letter. He probably yeah. didn't know that they always mm-hmm. did that. Well, I, 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 didn't write it. It. I, mean, I think Ivanka wrote it. You know, yeah, to, I don't think he yeah. wrote it. I think Ivanka yeah. did that. Yeah. I think Ivanka basically, um, if anything comes out in that nature, I think that probably that's something Ivanka did. I mean, if you think about Ivanka, him, I mean, you know, you're right. Fresh. I know that. But I'm yeah. saying that, but I think she probably wrote the note that's left for Biden. That seems like something that she would be the one that insists that be done of anybody that's around him. Because I don't think that's a thought that, that Trump would do. I'm going to leave a note. I mean, the first lady or She's sorry, the, the former thing. first lady. Well, the former first lady doesn't, doesn't even write her own thank you note. So I'm like, so no, I think, it, you know, Ivanka is more about protecting the brand. They're, right now it's about brand protection um, mm-hmm. for, for the majority of them. But I think that as we look at this week and there's a whole lot that happened this week and we look at the historical aspects of it and so forth. Um, you know, I am I am not a Pollyanna in any form or fashion. Um, I'm, I, I'm a, I try to be realistic about things, but I also am very mindful of the historic effect and what that means. I mean, the fact that we have um, a woman that, is, a woman, who's African-American and Southeast Asian um, that comes from a law and order background as vice president meant something to me um, and went to HBCU in, in part of a you know, black sorority, all those things that uh, ding, 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 like, you know, and, and she held her own through that process. But, but for me kind of looking at, you know, 
because bottom line, you have to say, you know, we can see what happens in DC. We can see, I look about how does it affect me in my life? You know, because, you know, I think I've said this before, we have to look at our local um, um, representatives and our local government and our governors and our legislatures and how all this is going to trickle. So yeah. the, from, you know, what's going to happen the first, you know, 100 days, the co you know, how we're going to get vaccinations, under co coming in and understanding that there is, there was no backup to the vaccinations. You know, there was no backup, you know, they're having to start from scratch from a lot of things. So having to come in and take control over, over that. But I don't know, I think that, um, you know, not that it's a brave new world, nothing, I don't look at it in that way. I'm, I'm a little bit more cynical in a lot of respects, but being able to kind of say, okay, you know, you're right, D, and you know, what Trump did was basically make, oh, it make it made people wake up to say, you just can't like, you know, think that everything's just gonna happen because it's gonna happen. You have to go out and actually be effective in that way. So for me, I look at it as how is all this gonna affect a 50 plus year old African-American woman who has- Not 32. Thank you. No, I'm not 32. Yes, I'm 58. Okay. I will say that yeah. in public. So you and Beth are 32. No, no. <laughs> no, no. I, I was no. once. Yeah, at one time. <laughs> um, but um, but you know, how does that affect me? And what do I do in this new environment? What do I, what can I impart? What can I be of service to? What can I, you know, um, um, how can I be impactful um, in this new environment? Because one of the things that, you know, you know, our friendships change, our family members, you know, we have them you know, are, might be changing. Um, how does this affect how we go about in the work environment, you know, um, and everything, all that. And so it'll be interesting to see what's through the impeachment, through the, through the trials, through all the trials that are gonna happen for all the Capitol Hill rioters or insurrectionists, how all that's gonna be, you know, media father, but how, how does that affect people, you know, individually? So for me, it's gonna be an interesting year. And then, and then remember that, you know, we have other things going on in the world, you know, <laughs> that affect us as human beings. I mean, you know, we are part of a larger global family. Um, and what are those things that affect us? I mean, yes, I mean, we basically got a taste we got, we experienced what we go in, what we've been going to other countries for centuries saying, oh no, you can't have undemocratic right. elections. Oh no, no, mm -hmm. you can't do those, oh, those human rights violations. Oh no, you, you can't do that. But, but, oh, here he is. Now they're looking at us saying, oh, but you can, and you allowed it. And you let somebody come into the Capitol. Oh my God. So we have to be able to say, okay, Sometimes you gotta take care of your, what's happening in your own house as well, but we can't be out there and you know be the you know go out there and like, I think was it there was a quote from Teddy Roosevelt about going out and carrying a big stick. We can't do that. We, <laughs> our credibility has been shattered in that regard. We have to rebuild whatever all the trust we lost, all the credibility we lost, and it's not going to be the same playing field anymore because there are other co countries and leaders that are going to take are going to come up to that level right now. Yeah, you know, we're not like just because we got rid of Trump, we're back on top. We're not. Oh, no, no. Oh, you know, no. We have to. We rebuild. just created something. Just created something. I, don't, I don't know how. I don't know about um, Sweden, but the response I know from uh, people in other countries have been, "Oh well, listen, my." Uh, I need to preface that by saying that I don't. I I don't. Uh, I don't have a lot of contact or a lot of close friends who are very conservative and Republicans who sort of weeded themselves out from my Facebook page, if you will, over the years. But um, but the the people I know who are either expats living in other countries or just from other countries are have really been rooting for us. I mean, like waiting for Trump to leave. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't. I don't get a sense that we hate you, Americans. I get the sense that we're sorry for you, Americans. Yeah. And also, yeah. and also, there's a, a little bit of you know your own medicine kind of shit. You know what I mean? Because people have been dealing with this kind of stuff for you know for centuries, mm -hmm. and now we're like you know. But I, I agree. There's there is a lot of work to do, and I, again, because my my role as a psychologist is to um, be, uh, I mean, working with people and not uh, not adapt, not teaching them to adapt to this um, horrific situation, but to understand that anything that you're feeling emotionally 
spiritually, psychologically, it has to be looked at against the backdrop of all of this, this, this political stuff. And then, I mean, I don't, and I don't think it's an accident that COVID happened at the same time, which is an amazing um, experience of these two things happening at the same time, you know, COVID and this horrid administration. So, yeah, you know. So I'd like to thank our great grandparents generation for not passing down any information whatsoever about the 1918 pandemic. My grandmother is about to be 104. She was a lot Wow. I remember my great grandmother. I was very young, uh, but I don't remember very much detail in history books, which would have made us put money towards preventing things like this happening. So what we should promise our grandchildren's generation and great grandchildren's generation is that we're gonna be honest say there's a whole bunch of stupid people and um, try to prepare them like, hey, you need to put some, some money to the side <laughs> to make sure you don't uh, get locked up in your house for you know, a year and a half <laughs> while everybody dies and you're watching on FaceTime. Well, and there's, um, there's no guarantee so I, that the... Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm. I was going to there's no guarantee that the next thing doesn't come along in, in two years. Exactly. Absolutely. You know, but we, I mean, we it, actually it, knew this. Obama had yes. um, had a, a playbook. Had a, they had a pandemic playbook. Uh, That's right. Pandemic readiness uh, thing that was That's a part right. of the upper echelon of the government. The second uh, Trump got there because he got rid of everything from Obama, even the free bikes at the White House, <laughs> so that the staffers could ride Man. around in D.C. He got rid of that, but he and, got rid of this. And the toilet bowl. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah yeah. yeah. yeah, just out of spite. But, you know, it could come in two years. And the biggest thing we should worry about is when we uh, start to get um, things that don't work with antibodies. Because that, <clears throat> if you think staying inside now sucks, wait until that hits us. And mm -hmm. then we're going to have some problems. But I plan to be living on Mars or something by then, so I'll be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm more so, I mean, the, the thing about it, with, especially when we're discussing COVID and here in Sweden and how we are still waiting <laughs> with all the hoo-ha that is going on. I mean, I had friends in the States who were like, oh, got my COVID shot. I was like, what the hell? Because <laughs> my other is, I, and then I, and I remember right before, like I said, you know, like all of us are saying, right before Trump left and he's talking and they're asking him about his the plan he had for COVID. It's coming. It's just getting checked over. Blah, 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 blah. And then when the new regime came in, they were like, there was no plan. We have to write a new plan. We have to write a, and not even new, we have to write a plan. A plan. Because there was never a plan. He didn't no. have anything in the back. He wasn't trying to Space fix nothing. Rights. And I thought to myself, okay, that's a good thing, but Okay, write a new plan, but then I still compared it to Sweden. I said, like, you know what? With all the stuff that is going on in the U.S., they still got their shots. <laughs> Why are we not got I haven't gotten my shot yet. I haven't gotten my still shot. Still got four hundred thousand dead, and that's yeah. a, that's, that's the right. thing that I yeah. I do like about Biden. He showcases a level of empathy that has it's it's weird to me that when we talk politics, we don't talk about COVID in the same way because it's kind of fractured itself away from everything else. Mm -hmm. I've had to how pick do, up the phone and call so many people back home who watch their parents say goodbye to their parents over FaceTime mm -hmm. or Zoom or whatever. Mm -hmm. I've watched the funerals where they're standing outside in the cold mm -hmm. and you know socially distance and you know they get none of that community and I've lost a lot of people in my life. But I never got to lose these people without the community that comes with it, where people are stopping by, giving you food. Right, exactly. Uh, it got on my nerves, but now I appreciate it because when you don't have that at all, it's repulsive. And it is. Sweden, Sweden does the same thing because Sweden has omitted the human cost of this. You never see on the news about people who lost someone. It is a totally numbers-based thing. And I think when history looks back at us, they're gonna wonder why we're so callous when it comes to this situation, because we've been very callous with it. The, the January 6th thing took over the entire news. And we are averaging in the States, what, 
4,000 people a day. Yeah. Do you remember what it was like the day of 9-11 when <clears throat> we started to figure out it'd be 3,000 something people that had died and how horrific that felt? We didn't Where let go of live? that for years. Where do you live? He's in Sweden. I live in Sweden. Oh, you live? Okay. Yeah, I've been here for 17 years. I moved from Harlem oh. to here. Okay. Well, I'm probably the only one on this platform who has grave reservations about this so-called vaccine. I had been following Gary Null for the better part of 30 years or so. And he has helped me exponentially health-wise. And he's worked with a lot of celebrities. He has books. He has his own Paradise Protocols books. He has so much information. He does scientific peer-reviewed uh, studies and work. What they are doing with this vaccine is uh, a sin and a shame. How they're promoting it. And like the public is following along like lemmings. I'm like, what? no one's doing the research. You have a groundswell of a thousand plus doctors who are signing this petition because the research is flawed. So that's all I'm gonna say and watch for everything to come to the fore. He's never been I, wrong yet. I, and Gary No, PPS is there, hire Gary No to rake in millions of dollars with his health protocols and his thinking, all of that. But pharmaceutical got mad and said, kick him off or we're gonna pull out a 13. He's off the air, but he has a radio station, WBAI. He's international now. I mean, every, he has such a groundswell of people who wanna know what is going on. So it's, as mm -hmm. the, that's all I'm gonna say. And everybody else do this, so they you know. No, no, my button. response to that is like every single person that has been against a vaccine that I've ever talked to tend to talk from a standpoint of an individual country. Now, I grew up DC area, you know, I was walking past Howard talking to those former Black Panthers. I grew up around them, civil rights leaders, all that kind of stuff. There is a difference when there is a certain, there's a, a effort to potentially push towards a specific group of people within the country. There is no such a thing. And anybody who, you lived in DC, didn't you? And uh, you lived in the DC area, right? Yes. And there is no such a thing as a secret in the DC area. I've seen CIA people sit there and say all kinds of crazy stuff about the <laughs> president. And, you know, I've seen FBI agents, yeah, we were there, and, you know, blah, blah, blah. And George H.W. Bush was doing this. They say it over the thing. There is no way that there is a global conspiracy that would, that would in any way, shape, or form make this work. And I have grown up, because I grew up Seventh day Adventist. And so a lot of Seventh-day Adventists end up being doctors and, and scientists. And so I have a I have an abnormal amount of people that I grew up with that I trust their intelligence to the thing. But what they've always been since we were kids are very curious people. Very mm -hmm. curious people do not have an ideology behind it. They're just following the trail. And they, you know, they, sometimes it's annoying, but there is no way that you can trick these type of curious people to a global conspiracy. We're beyond global conspiracies at this point in time. Everything Good. comes out within two, three years in Thank the 60s God. and 70s. But in this one, you're gonna tell me that Iran is working with the US and, and oh, you know, God. North and South Korea, along with Uganda. And, and everybody oh, just sit at a table like, look, what are we gonna do? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what it is at the end of the day. And those of us who are over here in Sweden, we're getting the same exact shot as all these white people over here. So we'll be all right. <laughs> I'm taking the vaccine. And they want you as a black person, especially someone who's in the age range that it could take you out, is to be distrustful. We have a right as black Americans to be distrustful. I respect your right to be distrustful. But if you allow this to be the reason why it takes your life, then they won. No, I have a terrible immune mm -hmm. system. You know, I have rashes, I have eczema, I have uh, anaphylaxis. I, I have too many problems for them to put something yet, another something in my body. So that's why I'm, I am very concerned for myself. But again, as I said, the information is there and that's what I'm following. Because mm -hmm. Fauci, you know, they're not going to tell it. None of those folks are going to tell it. 
I, I just mm -hmm. uh, I just found out actually right like five minutes before this call that my my parents who are in the U.S. they're in Boston area actually um, that they're getting the vaccine on Monday or their first shot Very on Monday cool. and I was so happy to hear that you know they live in a retirement home they have a very good very relatively safe good for them thing, good but for them. Still, I will sleep much easier after they've mm -hmm. gotten that vaccine that's good yeah. good for them is there have you have have Andrew or D or uh, have have you guys heard or Beth even have you heard anything here regarding uh any time period of when they're going to because I know they were going to the nursing homes first. And I was like, okay, that should be really quick. There aren't that many nursing homes. Ain't nobody going nowhere in the nursing homes. That should be like, you know, really, really quick. And it hasn't been, it's been like a month. And I think they, at the time when I last looked, it were at 80,000 people. And I thought to myself, hmm. And then I, you know, you then you look over on other numbers like in the UK who started maybe a week or two before us. And they were already over 100,000 and other countries are over 200,000. I was like, well, what is Oslo behind doing? And why haven't we, you know, why hasn't it come any closer or to more people, I should say, um, here? We have a terrible it, government. <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, we have a well, terrible I, government over I, I, here. They, they tried to push it off onto the scientists. Uh, mm -hmm. Tignell has been riding around on trains with no mask on and all this kind of stuff, not even setting an example. Um, they then realized that wasn't going to work. And the thing that I think is actually beneficial for us over here is now that we have an actual adult walking around in the in 1600 Pennsylvania Ave, we're going to see a switch in America that will allow, that will no longer allow other countries just like wing it. Because it's going to look weird when it goes from it's a trash fire over there. We're not as bad as the trash fire in the U.S. To all of a sudden, it is lined up. Everybody's wearing masks. People are doing this. And they're getting millions of people per week um, done. And so I think what it will eventually turn in is the prime minister will be ousted from this because they're the social Democrats. They're sitting out here acting like they're Republicans in the way that their approach has been. We're not going to impose on your things. And I recognize that the Constitution here doesn't allow them to go as far. Right. And it's the same thing with guns in America. It's pretty much the same thing. But they have had a horrible branding and, and getting stuff across. When I walk around in Stockholm and go into buildings, I'm wearing my mask. And it's what, 75% of the people walking around, even people in the 60s and 70s, you know, walking around with no mask on, trying to get close right. to me. I'm like, Please stand off. And so we're going to we're going to be able to see this stuff change drastically because that is actually that we're not we're not the moral center of the earth. But but if we're doing terrible, it justifies it with other countries, uh, the U.S. And now that justification won't be there for something that's just based off of science. So we'll see what happens uh, with that. But I, I would I think that the government is showing now here that they're they're willing to ignore because Tignal is trash. Um, this is guy said we're going for herd immunity when herd immunity didn't happen. Then he was like, I never said it, even though I can Google it on um, right. you know uh, Vice News mm -hmm. where he's like, we're going for herd immunity. And he said mm -hmm. it in English, so I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I you know, heard it. I heard it. <laughs> yeah. And so they, uh, you know, these things they they're constantly changing. But at the rate that people are dying over here, and the fact that when you add our neighbors up around us, theirs is nothing near where we are. People actually get excited when, like, the death rate shoots up in Denmark, and I'm like, yeah, that was ten people. We had 90 <laughs> people die today. <laughs> and that was 10 people in a week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like yeah. So 162 uh, this week. And it's yeah. almost like a gambling kind of thing. I mean, I think, and especially, like, I think what Dee was pointing out before, and I think this was a little bit was my issue before when they always talked about the number of deaths. And I remember a friend of mine who just, re who unfortunately passed away not even of COVID. He had COVID. He was in Barcelona and he and he contracted COVID and he was in the worst of ways and he survived. He survived COVID. He stayed a little longer in Barcelona. He came back to Sweden. He was working. 
And I remember him coming out. He filmed it. It's even on YouTube. And he filmed himself coming out. And people were applauding him as he as he rolled out. And that's what I realized a lot of hospitals were doing. The survivors, they were, you know, they were literally applauding them as they walked out and just greeting yes. them. And, you know, and so the, and, and so the, 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 the patient can thank them. They stood there and so they can thank them. And so my thing was after a while when I kept seeing the numbers of death and I said, well, how many lived? <laughs> can you just tell me how many lived? That number has got to be bigger, you know? And and someone said, well, that's not an important statistic. I said, why not? Why not? If you have 50 or 60 million right now who, or a hundred or 200,000 who are infected, who <clears throat> had COVID, and then you have 10,000 who have died and you have 8,000 who are still are in, in ICU, how many have lived? How many have had it, gone through I, you know, the hospital, blah, 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 and lived? Can you just, I just want that figure. So at least I feel there's a balance because I think a lot of people that once, especially at the beginning, that if you have COVID, you will die hmm. because they gave no other, they gave no other vision. Yeah, and that, and that's that's not really true. And I mean, you can no. get numbers on on uh, ICU, how many ICU visits. It's mm -hmm. hard to get statistics on how many people got it, especially because you know they're telling you unless you're on death's door, don't just stay home, don't yeah. go to the hospital. Yeah. And so all those people, that's a statistic we just don't know how many people got it like that. Right. Um, not to right. mention the people who died because they the lack of care because the hospitals are overwhelmed. Right. So that's but, one of the reasons too that they have to be careful because there are people who had an asthma attack and died. Thank or, you. You know, that's something close. or whatever, you know, and they died because there's no doctors available for them. Uh, right. And in California, which if uh, you're in California, right? Yes. Can you please mm. explain how you have weather that we will walk outside hugging <laughs> and you all have the worst in the United States? Because it's, it's really hard. When there's it's snow insane. outside, I can show you snow. <laughs> I, I get it. I know. I, I know. And initially when it was happening, it was like, well, we'll never be like New York. Poor New York. Boy, they're having a hard time. And it, oh, it's it's a mess here. But the the vaccination rollout is going. I got my vaccine uh, on the day of the inauguration. So and Congratulations. It's a very easy process and just very, yeah. But mm -hmm. the, and it, here's the funny, and I do have to get up because I have a patient in a few minutes, but, but mm -hmm. I... I want to say that uh, going to, I, I didn't even know like the vaccines were, uh, that, that it was changed that if you were over 65, you could, you could get it. Well, you didn't just have to be a healthcare worker. So, um, but I wasn't, well, I was waiting because I thought it was going to be a while. And then I was getting calls from my adult children going, you could, you know, click on this link, you can get an appointment. So I did, I went in and it was just ex right here in my little El Sedano Recreation Area Center. And it, everything was so organized. It, it was, it was beautiful. And I, I went in and, and there was like maybe three people. That was the line. And, uh, but then this woman came out and said, she came rushing towards me. And she, uh, this, this kind of slight little white woman, very feisty though. And she, she said, get out of line. They're out of vaccines, they're out of vaccines. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She said, yeah, they, they refused to give one to me because they didn't have an appointment. And I said, okay, Karen. Okay, so but, so she's like, this is ridiculous. I came up and I said, but and they said, you don't have an appointment. She goes, well, do you have an appointment? I go, yeah, dude, that's kind of how it's done. You get an appointment and you show up. She's like, but I explained to them, I tried to get an appointment and they were filled. And they, I just did, I don't, and she just stood there for five minutes going, I don't understand what's happening here. <laughs> I need to speak to the manager. It was really, but it was just funny to me that it was like, look, honey, you need to take a seat. Cause we're, you know, I was still, I was still, you know, I was surprised that I could get in. Um, and, and so it, they're opening up places here, like Disneyland and Dodger Stadium, and they're just like doing it. They're just giving the vaccine. They're opening it up to almost everyone. So congratulations. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I well listen, but we're the, our situation is so dire that they freaking got to do something. But why does a place with perfect weather <laughs> have such a problem? <laughs> I mean, well, you have to understand, Jermaine and the rest of us are sitting inside, inside because we can't sit in the sun right now yeah, because it's I, dark we have and no snowy. 
Yeah. Yeah. I had some today. I was yeah. up. Yes, she did. We had, we had some today. Okay. Today. But the Today. numbers kept going up and I was talking to, again, I would talk to a lot of my, my clients and even family members where I would sit, where they were getting together for the holidays and doing something like, okay, really, you think this is not going to catch up? Because, you know, well, you just, I, together I, I didn't outside. understand it. Pardon? Together outside. I know. We had almost no deaths here during the summer when we had the weather you have right now. Do you, do you understand it. that in I, Sweden, I get it. if we get had it. 72 degrees, mm -hmm. you would not have any of us who are in yeah. Sweden on this, or you would have us outside. I have to be outside right now. It's mandated yes. because uh, yes. it's 72 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> it's a legal <laughs> <Absolutely>. requirement. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know how you do it. I am such a, a, a native. We get tickets uh, in California, California when it's 72 it, degrees. If it dips down to 70, I've got my Uggs on and sweater, you know? <laughs> I, mean, I don't know how you do the stove, but but bless you. I still want to come out to Sweden and visit you, Jermaine. Um, anyway, I do have to dash, and it was a pleasure meeting all of you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. See you back. All right. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Tell everybody Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. <laughs> But I mean, I, I'm st I still, you know, it, I I felt that way too about Cali, and about Georgia, and Florida, you oh, know. I'm walking around in short sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> I wear short sleeves inside. Yes, 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 we do. We inside, we inside. Because what is the weather like in New York? You don't have any snow yet, no, Deborah? No, we we it's threatening Tuesday and Wednesday. We had it's a little bit last month. Uh -huh. And it was like only three inches, four, five most. Mm -hmm. But snow has been very scarce in about two years. About two years. Really? Yeah. How could it swing up? Okay, maybe it's a yeah, smattering here and there. Inches. No, no inches that we have to trudge through with boots. No. No. Mm -hmm. oh, well, that's a good thing actually, because New York yeah. is crazy. But the wind the is howling outside my window now. So <laughs> because New York can't handle the snow like you Bostonians can. Oh, boy. Well, oh Lord. Lord. <laughs> sure we can. No, but it, it's a little bit like, you know, Stockholm. I, I was amazed when I first got here and it like snowed for 36 hours. And you looked up wow. and it was like this much snow. And you're like, you can blow that away like, like this. And it blows away. Yeah. Whereas Boston, I'll go to bed at, if I go to bed at 11 o'clock and it's snowing, there's, you know, this much on the ground in the morning. And the plows have gone through the night. And the, yeah. what I learned was that basically what happens, the reason why between New York and Boston there's such a difference in snow production is that you got the Gulf Stream coming up and exactly. the Arctic wind. Yes. So Boston just gets this dump of that warm water coming up from yeah. the Gulf Stream and then the Arctic. And it's yeah. just that difference that makes the difference between why we mm -hmm. get like two feet of snow and New York will get six inches for the exact same <laughs> snowstorm. I, I just wanted to uh, point out that her reason for showing Boston's greatness is based on the fact that usually this time of year, her team is in the playoffs. <laughs> All Dude, right. Go on and try. I have been a Boston <laughs> fan since the 80s. And the only one doing anything in Boston in the 80s were the Celtics. And that was it. And I, you know, I'm a Boston fan. So the Patriots sucked. The, the Red Sox sucked. The Bruins sucked. I didn't care. I'm from Boston. We love our teams. Now that they got great, well, that was easy. Thank you. It's easier to be, like, proud of a team that doesn't suck than when it does suck. But since I'm a very proud Bostonian from when most of them sucked. I'm still okay that they're no, they're, like they're it's sucking fine. again right now. I'm gonna watch Tom that. Brady tomorrow. Yeah, so Brady, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like power to Brady because you know what, the dude believed in himself, and the big production didn't want to believe in him, and he went every, like to everybody, and he just went off and he did it, and he said, "Hey Gronk, come with me." And Gronk's like, "I'm all over that." And it's like, good, because, you know, whatever that was, I'm not a big, I'm not a big, what's his face? The craft fan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, hey, I'm given, I've always liked Bill. I have respect for Bill. I don't know where he is in this whole cra crazy thing, but that he's told Trump, uh -uh, not showing up for your like uh, freedom of, you know, medal of freedom. Yeah, I was like, that was right, good. Bill. Because what I've always liked about Bill, I love Bill. I've loved Brady. 
politics aside, what what they have consistently done is like Bill Belichick's all about do your job. That's it. And one of my favorite things in that was I was in Boston a couple of years ago. I'm in my parents. You know, my parents are glued to the television and I'm sitting there like on my laptop <laughs> trying to, you know, just trying to be social, but, you know, doing my own thing. And the news flashes every 15 minutes with whatever, the same thing. And it's been Tom Brady had cut his thumb the entire day was Tom Brady had cut his thumb. <laughs> oh, Tom's leaving the stadium. He cut his thumb. You know, it's like, what's going on with Tom's thumb the entire day, all day long, Tom's thumb. And like finally there was a all. press conference and Bill comes out and you can, you just see it in his body language. It's like, somebody's like, you got to go out and give like an announcement about what's going on with Tom and his thumb. And you know, he's just freaking annoyed by it. So he comes out, he's like, um, yeah, so uh, Tom cut his thumb today. Thank you. And like left, that's all he said. And I was like, Bill, I love you. And he was just like, hey, yeah, he cut it- his freaking thumb. He went home. But when it comes, okay, I, I, cause the only time I actually really, really watch the sports is when, um, the Super Bowl, pretty much. It, there's not going to be a Super Bowl, or no? Yeah. Mm-hmm. There is? There, yeah, but no yeah, audience. Yeah, there's going to be a Super Bowl. No, no audience. Well, no live audience. You can watch no. it like on Zoom. Right. Like, D, go long, go long. <laughs> really? Are you serious? Yeah, it will be. Yeah, just they... like the NBA did theirs. I know. So there's an NBA this, championship this is a, with no one did in it. I, I just shared with you that I, Super Bowl. I didn't watch a basketball. No, I'm telling you, the NBA, this, when was it? Uh, August? No, October. Okay. Um, October, uh, LeBron James and the Lakers won. One. Okay. Um, and there was no one in the stands. They won. Okay. Yeah. So who's playing for the Super Bowl? We're not, we there, yet. We're not there. We're not there yet. yet yeah. uh, but Boston is not in the Super didn't Bowl. even make the didn't did okay. for the, like the first time in I don't know 10, 20 years whatever it's been okay. like didn't weren't the AFC champs. Nope, there was there was definitely no glory in Boston. Not this year. Not for the self, Not for the Patriots. And one glorious yeah. question: How? Are you people going to feel about traveling in the next six to eight months? I or am will praying. Any, will any my... of you be traveling sooner than that? Well, I'm. My niece is um, getting married in Italy here from Sweden. Wow. In uh, the end of April, and she had to okay. like put in the numbers. They had already postponed it once, and actually, she and her husband to be, and my sister in law, most of them have had COVID now as well. So they were like, well, we can put it off again and not still not know when, or we can just have it and those who come, come. So it was kind of like, what are you gonna do? Either you come or you don't come. And that was to every guest. Mm-hmm. So I, I did not knowing and still hoping that we're gonna have got the vaccine by then, which may not happen. Um, I said, look, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll come. And, and if we don't come, we'll still pay for everything. But I, I would have included this trip in being a, like of a more of a, a, a sightseeing trip. But now we're, we're, we're going to, you know, get a ride to Arlanda. We're going to get a plane into Milan. I'm going to get in a rental car and drive to a boat launch where we're going to go out to a little island in a lake. And we're going to be at that little island with just the guests. And then we're going to get back on the launch and I'm going to get back in a rental car and I'm going to get back on a plane, the direct flight to Arlanda. So while it's still travel, so I'm not trying to remove or reduce the, the responsibility on that sense. I, we're doing nothing else. It's, we're gonna go to a private function. It just happens to be in Italy. And if it's still crazy, I've already, you know, I've already, I said it with a disclaimer of, I can't promise you we're actually gonna get on the plane but again, I'll pay for anything that we would have had to pay for. Um, Over there. Yeah. So you, you, we might be empty seats, but we'll, we'll pay, we'll, we'll, you know, I just, it's my niece. It's very so gracious of you because I've seen a lot of court shows when that same scenario worked out and Judge Judy said, look, you got to pay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was like, either we say no 
and and no, if it hadn't been our niece, I would have said just no, period. Mm. Uh, but with the, the several months, with four months at the time I had to make the decision and the reports being that there should be an available vaccine for us, like, cause Sweden had said, and we're, if we're gonna ever be there, I don't know, that by summer they had, had said that everybody in Sweden who wants to be vaccinated should be able to be vaccinated. I was kind of hoping on the, you know, they would start the rollout and maybe, you know, we could, the kids can't get vaccinated anyway, cause they're all under, you know, there's, there's mm -hmm. six, well, no, one might be able to. Um, so that's the only thing I've actually booked and I still have a tinge of guilt having done that, but I do accept that I might just cancel it if things go crazy and, mm -hmm. and stay bad I'm gonna just say sorry can't go mm -hmm. and and just take that hit um but I haven't been to the U.S. in almost a year now and my mother's 94 or going 94 and um you know I feel it feels wrong to not have been over but I'm hoping as well that uh that we usually go in August with the kids, that by August, I haven't bought any tickets. I'm not gonna buy any tickets until I know more. But my mother's, my mother's been a little bit radicalized by Fox News, even though she hasn't actually watched Fox News for since my father died in 2018 or actually since before. It's amazing how it's still in her. And I don't, you know, that's a whole nother line of conversation mm -hmm. to be had about mm -hmm what it actually means to be radicalized because we associate radicalization with like fringe groups and these weirdos and all this other thing and it's I think if we go back to where we started in this conversation about the capital I think a lot of those people not only that entitlement comes from entitlement but it comes from a radicalization point where they believe they really do believe that there were there's fraud and that there's deception and that there's you know, the deep state and that Democrats have a pedophilic ring that are like serving pizza. I mean, it's, they believe it. It's, it's not just conversation. There's, there's belief in that. And my mother's in a little bit of the same thing. Like she's kind of, she doesn't want to, she's has said, and I don't know how sincere she is on this, that she will not take the vaccine for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. And She's in the medical field, so for her to be in this naysaying group just says to me, I don't know what's going on, but I need to get my butt over there and slap some sense into her. Oh, we'll, we'll, you'll see, you'll see, you'll see when, oh, hopefully you'll get there. Hopefully this year will be the year that you guys can, that, get, yeah, because she's, you know, you we go. are holding our breath every time, like she's, yeah. she's holed up and, and we all, you know, my brother's got driven up from Florida to take care of her. And okay. her, ha her caregiver is over 70 as well, is also terrified. So she, they don't leave the house. And so we're holding our breath because my mother for sure is dead if she gets it. She's just dead. There's no question. Like, will she survive? No, she'll, she's gonna be dead. Um, and Not her, necessarily, yeah. 90, 90s and 100 year old. Oh, my people. mother has, she's AFib. My mother has, you know, my mother has health issues. So she's AFib, you know, she's good. She's, she's, you know, she's, but they can be asymptomatic, asymptomatic. Yeah, but you know. Something the, about them, maybe the DDT that was sprayed in the air around them made them <laughs> mummies or something. But uh, uh, I, I'd like to hope, but you know, I'm like, yeah. I'm accepting the fact that if mm -hmm. she gets it, it's 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 not going to be good. No, yeah. and okay. and her okay. and her healthcare worker or her healthcare like her we have somebody that basically lives with her is over seventy as well. Yeah, so and, you have to worry about her as well. She can die from it, right. so you know right. a lot easier. So I'm you know watching every step. I'm in touch with her healthcare good. team. Like give it to her. The same thing. Like if my mother doesn't get the, I think she's going to get it like soon in in February. Mm -hmm. So the travel to Boston would be the first thing is she has to have had it and, and her, you know. Well, I think, tra I think travel wise, I think all, everyone at this particular point, because they just put out a, a thingy from the US at least just recently that um, anyone traveling internationally has to have a test before they get on the plane. And oh. then when they're on, and then when they get to their destination, we have to have a 10 day quarantine. In the US, yeah, I just US. came out with that. 
that they just came out with. So that's going to be our deal if we plan to travel anywhere. Is anybody you, else? I mean, I just yeah. Do you guys plan telling. to travel anywhere? No. 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 I would love to, but yeah. I want to, but you know, I'll travel not. within Sweden. That's, that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's. Yeah, I think that's what. Yeah. I think that's what most people that do. Well, a lot of people are doing. I know there are a lot of people who are traveling away, and um, I know, and even in certain groups that are that that I, I I've seen where people are planning like, oh well, I'm going to do this for three or four days, and does anyone know? And I'm, you know, it's you know, you're to a point at this particular point. It's been almost. A, it's been a year. You've been in this for like a year, pretty much. A little, uh, and it's pretty much a year right now. Yeah, I and, think March. Uh, and March yeah, well, March would be a confirmed switch. year that they like shut everything. Yeah, like, right. Yeah. I can um, say that. Um, I I yeah. left. Like I ran into COVID scenarios because it was already starting around this time last year. Right. So I, I, we were leaving the Philippines this time or right. mid oh, yeah. mid uh, January. Right, because you were gone a while. I was gone a while. We came back on the 10th or 11th and I had to still go back and get my mother and bring her home to Boston. Right. Mm -hmm. And I deliberated whether or not I should just have gotten back right up back on the plane. My brother, my, yo and my husband was like, don't even fly home with us. Just mm -hmm. stay, skip your ticket, stay, put your mother on a plane, fly over with her and then come home from Boston, mm -hmm. which is what I was gonna have to do. But I was, I decided not to. And mm -hmm. I flew out on February second in the morning and as i was checking in at Orlando, there was an extra amount of time where, where i'm like what's taking so long they're like well you're flying via hong kong we just got to make sure that they're still letting people in from hong kong into into manila right, okay and they did and they said yep it's still okay because mainland china had already been shut off right and when i was in the air between copenhagen and hong kong the Philippines changed its policy. So as I walked, as I got to the gate in Hong Kong to get on the plane, the last four hours of this, you know, 20 hour trip, they said, are you a, if you're not a resident or a citizen, you're not going. And I couldn't get on the plane. And remember, so, so for me, it's from now because I was already like, do I leave now? Do I not right. leave now? And my, my little story, basically, I always joke and say, if you have a credit, if, where there's a credit, where there's a will and a credit card, there's a way. So I was stuck in Manila, sorry, stuck in Hong Kong. And I had to buy a one-way ticket to Singapore and buy a one-way ticket from Singapore to Manila because everybody else <laughs> was being sent back to, to Sweden. And I I said, all right, I'll get sent back to Sweden and I'll do it over again and I'll just fly via somewhere else. I'll fly via Singapore. And SAS told me, oh, sorry, you're, you bought a one-way ticket because my, my trip was supposed to be right. one okay. way one around way the around. world, basically. And they wouldn't even fly me back. So I had, that was my only out. So for me, it's been a year because I was, yeah. you know, deliberating. Do I leave now before Yoan's birthday is the first? So right. we were going to have a party for him. Like, do I skip the birthday party and just fly out now? Or do I wait until the second and fly out then? And mm -hmm. I chose to do the latter. And then, yeah. And then getting back. And Yoan kept saying, just do it because they're going to shut everything down. And I was still like, no, they won't. It'll be just fine. <laughs> and it was like skin in my teeth, got her back to Boston, got on a plane back to Sweden. I landed back in Sweden on February 26th to February 27th. And March was when like, wow. that's it. Yeah. yeah, March, yeah, March. Cause I remember that it was my last gig, March 9th. And I but it was have, already hairy a... this time of year last year, yeah. it was already hairy. Yeah. Andrew, you're not planning on going anywhere, no? No, I'm afraid not going anywhere. May, I mean, maybe within Sweden. Mm -hmm. uh, but otherwise, uh, travel is just not on the on the radar. Unfortunately, I'd love to see my family back in yeah. back in the states, but um, yeah, it's not happening. No. Uh, and Dee's not going anywhere. Ange, no. <laughs> that, we are all staying home. I'm, I'm, oh, I mean, home. once I get a once I get a vaccine, yeah, then it's yeah. Be a different yeah. thing. It's totally different uh, thing. Because I really want want to get my kids back to be around my grandmother again. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, she'll be 104 this year. So. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be um, that would be a sweet. Nineteen seventeen. Wow. Yep. Nineteen seventeen. Yeah, she's ten oh, years yeah. older than my mom. Wow. Yeah. 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 I, I'm, I'm hoping my parents can come here again now that they're at least they're getting the first shot of the vaccine. So mm-hmm. they're, yeah. they've canceled a couple of times. They were going to come, you uh-huh. know, and then this came out and then they're going to come again. And of course, it's still going on. But that, so get over here. Mm-hmm. But how does I mean that because the, there's one thing is the vaccine about whether or not we're safe to travel. But then the yeah. other thing is whether or not the country's coming yeah, exactly. and going, we're going to let you in like as an American citizen, the U.S. can't keep me out. But, you know, should I be traveling? But your right. parents. You know, this- I yeah. And I, I don't know what it'll and I don't know what it'll be in a few months mm-hmm. either. Um, my brother and his family were supposed to come last summer yeah. and, and that canceled. And they were already like, it doesn't look like we're going to be showing up this year either. And that's mm-hmm. not be- with or without the vaccine. I don't know when the European Union or Sweden is going to allow for non non-european people come on yeah, in. I th- I, they're gonna have to well they don't have to but i, I mean i think they're gonna start trying to take into account uh vaccinations i would hope a lot I of hope. incentive to get things i mean a lot of money there's a lot of incentive to get things rolling again a little bit more Ooh, good point andrew so they can you know where there's money there's absolutely will. yeah yeah um, i mean you got a really good point there that says um and that will encourage the people who are hesitant to get the vaccine to potentially mm-hmm. be inspired if they hey you want to go see pizza <laughs> you know yeah get, get a vaccine, vaccine and you can get on the plane yeah. <laughs> or at least have a covid test most most of them just most of the flights just want you to have a covid test so yeah, but i think that's because even... they can't insist on anything else right yeah. But, right. but a COVID test doesn't guarantee you aren't going to, sh- you know, develop it. Because even if you, some of the yeah, cases, like it's been within 36 hours or 48 hours. And some are even like within 24. But it's hard to get those tests back that fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas if you can demonstrate, like, I have my two shots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course, it's easier with a vaccination than it is just going yeah. back and forth with a because test. Because there's, there's still it, a risk of, yeah. of you getting a negative, you know, that it's a mm-hmm. false negative mm-hmm. or that... Um, you co- contacted it mm-hmm. contracted it, it for yeah yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, hopefully hopefully <coughs> within the next six months there will be huge change not only in the u.s government which has already begun and we can all breathe a slight sigh of relief se- mm-hmm. i'm trying to remember that 75 percent uh vaccinated population is a number where they they can say that the spread is herd not, you yeah. know what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Herd immunity. Yeah, herd, herd immunity. immunity. Mm-hmm. Really? Well, With, well that, that, that's after not... having received the vaccine, those who have been vaccinated, 75% of the population vaccinated, yeah. should still be. It, you should bring it, the number. Oh, I see what you mean. Bring yeah, the yeah, number yeah. down. I mean, you should bring the number down. Or, or have antibodies and then the spread, you know, if each person on an average spreads it to less than one other person, right. then, right. the, the right. then the number, yeah, then it goes down. So it, that, in, 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 can, that's like in, in a comparison, a parallel comparison to the flu shot. Everyone doesn't get the flu shot, but the ones that do get the flu shot bring the number down, that kind of thing. So yeah, I, but I see. When, no, I know it's not the same, but. but it, 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 it's like that for, you know, measles, mumps, rubella, and all those. Exactly. Things that we exactly. All get. exactly. Um, it, yeah. it still works. It still wipes it out as long as enough people get it. But, right. and yeah. actually, yeah, but even that number, the problem with the herd immunity, even with, if you bring up measles, mumps, rubella, or at least measles, is that that's been why a lot of people have been refusing to give their, their kids the, that shot. And the thing is that even if you're vaccinated, there's still a chance, like, I think you're only like an 80, 85% chance of not contracting Mm -hmm. uh, measles. So when you have these measles outbreaks and they're like, oh, people were vaccinated, still got measles. It's like, yeah, because it's, you're expecting that, that level of herd immunity. You have to be at, I don't know what percentage it's, it's beyond 70, but it's a high percentage of population in order to prevent that spread. But if you have a breakout, which is the problem, with measles, this isn't COVID, then yeah. you, you do have people contracting measles because the vaccine's not 100%. It's not 95% like this right. one's supposed to be. Right. Cool. 
Well, I want to think. Yes, go ahead, D. Before I, I close, I was going to let you all continue because I've kicked out my kids for two hours out of it, <laughs> and I think and they're like waiting at the door. <laughs> no, well, I they're was going to round it up anyway, so right they now. just yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> before we leave, just as an aside, before else. we leave, yeah. just as an aside, I've written uh -huh. a children's book, but I need oh. a children's book illustrator. So, does anyone know a children's book illustrator? Not off, we know, so I know a children's book author that might be able to connect you with a children's book illustrator. That's, that'd um, be awesome. So you too? too Jermaine, so, or Jermaine, yes. I'll let you know. It's, um, um, she's here in Sweden. So there's a, a couple, uh, I'll, I'll get Jermaine's, I'll, I'll ask her first and see if she knows anybody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. And I'd like to see it. I'm, look, I'm asking even more. I'd like to see an example of her work. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, 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 could, I probably can get you some names. You, you're going to have okay. to do the, the, the proof and on oh, your yeah, own. No yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm just going to round up everything now. I am so glad to have you guys here to talk about, like I said, our, our newly elected administration into the White House. Yes, a little bit of pre breathing and uh, also okay. <laughs> the, the hugest, you know, and, and our continuing discussion on COVID and us being locked up in our homes. Aww. But we will, <laughs> but, but soon, soon, you know, I mean, now that we're used to it and all, and, you know, hopefully that will also be something that will uh, subside after hopefully several more months with the immunizations that are going around and hopefully people are start getting healthier and people will be able to go out more. All them California people, yes, I'm telling y'all, stay inside. Florida too. <laughs> Georgia, you know who you are. <laughs> and wear your mask above wear, your nose. Wear your yes. mask. <laughs> wear those masks and, and trains and buses and crowded stores and all those other places. But, um, <laughs> but like I said, I'm so glad that you guys were here with me to discuss all these great topics and thank to giggle a little bit. Love oh, it. thank you. And talk about mm -hmm. football since I know nothing football. about football. Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> but anyone who has any questions, please just send a question, sit, uh, write a comment. You could have done it while you're watching, but that's okay. You can do it later on as well. Uh, if you know any of the people that are up here, surely you can just contact them directly. Uh, please subscribe to the page, like it, share it, tell your friends about it. Uh, our next uh, discussion will be in two weeks. Uh, I usually have them, really have had them every week because there's been so much happening, but we're going to have the next one in another two weeks. So I hope all of you out there come back and watch and listen and get a little bit on a Saturday evening. Ladies and gentlemen, again, so pleased that you guys can come. Andrew, D, Deborah, you came in there. I love it. <laughs> Angela <laughs> and Beth. <laughs> Thanks for inviting us. Uh, yeah, no problems. Just you guys hang on for, hang on, stay, stay on there for a little while longer. Uh, everyone else, we will see you again. Like I said, in hopefully two weeks time. All right, uh, just let me know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but please take care of yourselves and we are out and we will see you soon. So take see you care. Soon. Take care. Bye. Bye. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> Y'all are so crazy. All right, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys were here. Stop recording. Thank you. <laughs> 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 They're recording.